the only person available to join me today is somebody that I live with. So it's very horrible living with me, isn't it? No, it's not it's awful. No, it's somebody you have to live with. It's just such an unfortunate situation to be in. No, the horrible thing is that everybody else fucking flaked on me. Did they frosted flake on you? Slap. Seriously, I am not in the mood to be fucked with right now. So, all right, we are reading a fanfic called Aria and the Hound. Let me get screen share on. Just hope we don't have any embarrassing moments. It had been many days since she had been kidnapped by the Hound, one bleeding into the next as they traveled together through Westeros. She knew that he kept her alive so he could turn her over to her Aunt Lysa in the veil, as in the thing you wear over your face, and it made her hate for him grow all the more. She had no intention of going to the veil, as in an actual place people might go, but now that her parents were dead, along with her brother Robert, Lysa was the only family she had left except for John and Sansa, and she had lost track of both of them. Sansa, when she fled King's Landing with Yorin and his men headed for the wall, and John, when he left Winterfell to take the black. So, <sighs> the person who wrote this is not even attempting to um, stay in line with the original story. You can pretty much just tell that that's happening immediately because they don't know how to spell certain words. And they seem to be rather oblivious to, well, a larger part of this character's personality. Or rather, they're, they're deliberately ignoring it. Um, hatred is an understatement. I think that at this point in the story, uh, Arya Stark had a very, very pronounced... Um, drive for vengeance at this point in the story i mean she literally every day when she woke up or went to bed i believe every day she would um like re recite the names of people she wanted to kill basically um so i think that writing it as a as a as merely just a hatred um is very lazy and also very suggestive of them, the, the person writing this, that is, uh, intending to not have it be portrayed that way. And as you can imagine, well, as, as you'll soon find out, assuming that we can endure the misery of this long enough, assuming anybody could, uh, yeah, it's bad. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now she was stuck with the hound. Fate was cruel, for she hated him more than she could explain. He had killed her friend, Micah, had done horrible things. Oh, wait, this is, why is this capitalized in the middle of the sentence? What? His name is Micah, right? No, no, had. Had is capitalized. Look Probably that. because it was a period. That was not, that's a comma. That's no, why I said the middle of the sentence. the comma was a period, and then she changed it to a comma because of some bad editing or something. But when you change something to a comma. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I I am not going to explain second grade grammar. I okay. I'm moving on. Had done horrible things while in service to Joffrey, whom she hated worse than the Hound. You know, this is starting to read like uh, what's that guy? Is it uh, Kefka? I hate 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 you. Um. And it kidnapped her when she ran away from the brothers without banners and was planning on selling her. She. Cast okay, okay. So, first of all, who the fuck is Joffrey? What what horrible things did the Hound do? And who the fuck are the Brothers Without Banners? None of this, like, it just seems like... I feel like this entire section could have just been abridged with a... At this specific chapter in this particular part of the book... We are going to address the possibilities of an alternate timeline. Oh, she actually, I think, did indicate it's an AU in the um, 
description, which I completely skipped because I don't care. Right, but I apologize. I feel like this is redundant then, because what's, what's going on here is she's bringing in a whole bunch of different things and characters and and stuff that nobody knows what the fuck it is, and then naturally the story isn't gonna isn't gonna be read by anyone who knows what the fuck this is. Okay, because I know about. The original book that this is based on, very loosely based on, I, I, will, I will add. Um, and nobody who's read that book would genuinely take the time to find something like this. Or would enjoy something like this. Because yes, the Hound did do horrible things. But without the context of those horrible things and just his personality in general, which by the way is not portrayed even slightly properly here. Um, there is no real understanding of how this personality change or relationship or uh, Stockholm syndrome even occurs. Uh, it, it just it's just baseless and very lazy. But I suppose that's just the general theme of this type of writing from this type of person. She cast him a sour glance as they prepared to ride onward and scowled. So they both rode onward and scowled as she cast him a sour glance is what I'm getting out of that. But okay. Where are we going today? What are we doing? She questioned him, her stance radiating with frustration and malice. How does she have a stance if she's riding on a horse? But they're preparing to ride. <laughs> I am in need of a cup of wine, dot, 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 no space, or two or three. His gruff reply makes her snarl. Is that all he thinks about wine? She doesn't fight him when he scoops her up and tosses her a stride stranger. His huge, how do you pronounce, is that Deceter, Deceter? Okay, so, uh, uh, this is that her? What the D -E -S -E -T -E -R. fuck? D-E-S-E-T-E-R. No. No, that's not right. Okay. So she's trying to spell the name of a breed of a horse. What's the breed of the horse? Destrier or something like that. Anyway, so basically, uh, first of all, I don't think that the hound usually took very much like effort into communicating with Arya until like a certain point of the story and even then they were never it was never a where are we going what are we doing kind of a thing and also um yeah i don't think i don't think he he did very much like i remember one distinct part of the story where he like hit her in the head and knocked her out with a blunt side of an axe in like a battlefield or something mm -hmm. Because she was like trying to run away, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I remember that. Um, but actually, he usually just kept her tied up, and either on the back of his horse or on another horse. Um, so there was never—I don't think there was ever a situation where like she was like on the ground unless they were setting up camp or something. And even then, like he knew that he that she was going to like try and kill him at the drop of a hat, and like usually kept her tied up or in a, in a situation where she couldn't actually do anything to him. Um, because she, he knew for a fact that the first thing that she was going to try and do is kill him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, Oh, well she can walk around with me and you know, technically, you know, holding her captive, but she can walk around with me and she can be free. I mean, near the end of, near the end of her time with him, uh, it was kind of like that, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, they still didn't really trust each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is this is completely inaccurate and very lazy. I think I'm going to be saying the word lazy quite a lot for this. Okay. So she doesn't fight him. Instead, eep softly as you pick her up. I'm sorry. I, I did not pick her up. What? Where's this? I did not. Did, did you see me pick her up? Who did? Who did? Okay. Why, um, why, why Arya happening? did not fight the hound when he scoops her up, blah, blah, blah. Instead, eep softly as you pick her up, as if she weighs nothing. I'm, I'm sorry, which, which one of us picked her up? I don't remember picking her up. Did, did you pick her up? No. This is so bad. Like, why why even add that, that 
random perspective change. It doesn't add anything. Yeah. It actually sort of... Um, not that I'm in any kind of mood to be re reading this, but it, it takes me out of the... Uh, out of the spirit. <laughs> if there is any spirit to be had. You know, there's some there's some spirits down there if you want to drink some amaretto. No. We have well, I'm not sure if liqueur is a spirit, but anyway. Okay, so... Um, as if she weighs nothing. Hanging on as they ride down the road, heading for an inn nearby. I don't know why inn is capitalized. Why is there... It's like... Why why have a situation where there's no the setting is, is completely just like where where are they? They're just on a road. Because there's no description of where they're at. There's no description of like the, there there was there was the uh the exposition dump at the opening that just it wouldn't make any sense to anybody who hasn't read the book series and even then they would be loath to actually read this. <laughs> and then there's no like, oh, they're between they're they're in between King's Landing and somewhere on Westeros. Or they're on they're in this area that's like like it doesn't let's see. Um, there was usually some explanations, some, some sort of like even very brief. So they travel together through Westeros. That is, isn't that isn't that's not, no. It's not I'm enough? talking about like okay. between between like two cities on a road or in a specific region of Westeros. Or mm. You know, how many, uh, I, I forgot the actual term that they use, like knots or something like that. Uh, how many, how many knots away are they from the nearest town? Or, you know, he takes out a map and she sees the map and she's like, oh, well, maybe, maybe if we get over here, I could get help or something. But in reality, what actually happened for most of the story with, with the Hound and, and Arya is she, she, he didn't really take her into town or to, into inns. The entire point of him being there is because he they they were basically going through like neutral to hostile territory. They were near a war zone, you know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that the um, either either the uh, fuck, the the feast, the thing where like they killed all the all the people, and I I feel like that either that battle happened. Um. There was there was like some some big battle that had happened near there. So like, they they were going through a war zone. There was no stopping at an inn, um, at any point. I think that like there was one point where like they stayed at a castle or something, and that was like just before he she escaped. I think, um, and then there was also like one point in the story where they did actually run into the rebels that she mentioned very briefly, just a single like in, once right, mm -hmm. uh, and actually. There was a big fight that happened with that, and the Hound killed the leader of those rebels, mm -hmm. but he came back to life mm -hmm. because he was blessed with the the power of the Lord of Light or whatever. Uh, and then they just sort of like let him go. So, okay, I forgot to actually read the description. As I said before, and I was like, oh, I don't care. Uh, that was me covering. I apologize. But uh, description is, oh, this is actually a fic of the TV show. It's indicated right here. This is TV even less show, acceptable. Game of Thrones. This okay. Is even less acceptable. So what happens along the road between Arya and Sandor? It is a different AU, so there will be some smut in later chapters. I do not own any of the characters. They all belong to GRRM and his GOTS series. I hope you enjoy it, comma. It is a work in progress. There's five chapters. 54 favorites. Okay, so this is even worse. <laughs> Okay, okay, tell us how it's worse. Because even like in the books, you could kind of get away with making the hound look okay or sound okay or appear okay um, in your in your imagination by sort of underplaying the descriptions that were given about his appearance and his personality mm -hmm. in the books. In the TV show, he's very clearly an ugly old man with a fucking burn scar on his face. There is, there is scar, nothing... Scars are sexy. No, he looks like half his face is melted. So he's the Phantom of the Opera. That's sexy. <laughs> he looks like half his face is melted. He's a coward. He's afraid of fire. 
like this guy, this like they portrayed him really well, and and not and not in a very, not not even slightly sexy as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm I'm not like I I just I don't I don't see any kind of appeal for anybody to want to fantasize about this ugly burnt old man going after what a 15 16 year old girl maybe let me let me do an image search uh i mean i think the actor did a pretty good job of it let me let's see let's just look hold up hold up i need to share screen again um so i uh look at him he's got a burn scar on the side of his face like that he had he has like a kind of melted look about him yeah. Like, look, look at that. Look at that. That artist depiction of him. Okay. This one here. No, no, no. The artist depiction. This one here. Okay, so that's a case where like he kind of looks like a Dark Souls character. Almost. <laughs> he does. So, in this case, you can you can kind of imagine that he doesn't look so ugly. But mm. in the in the in the the TV show, go back go back to the TV show example. Uh, I disagree with you, but okay. No, Oops. I mean like. Oh, hold up! I gotta. Oh, and yeah. what I'm saying is, is that artist depictions based on the descriptions in the book have a lot more liberty as far as appearance is concerned. If you look at him here, he's this, just this, like, well, he, he's, he's not even particularly, oh, yeah. um, like, his, his expressions are always the same. He always has, like, this, this gruff, like, you know, look on his face. Well, for some, for some uh, women who I assume is what this is aimed Half at. Half his face is lopsided. For some of, for some women, it would be like, well, what would it take to soften him up? Or the opposite of that. I don't know. I, I, that, this is a wild ass guess. But. Like, yeah. he always, he always either looks like he's about to punch you or, he, or he's about to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> or he's about to punch you and then start yeah, crying. I'm telling you right now, encountering a person like this in real life, you would not want to want to have any sort of interaction. With <laughs> okay, people who who walk around and act like, or even or even just have like the facial expressions of that type of character mm -hmm. are, well, they're usually just incels. They don't, they don't <laughs> they can't get women. The hound is an incel, everybody. And he, I mean, that, that's a pretty accurate depiction. Hot of take. Too. It's, it's not even a hot take. It's just how he is in the book. Like he, I think he gets like a couple a bit of action in a brothel. But like other than that, nobody loves him or wants him. Um, he doesn't care about that. He's actually, his entire focus and concern has nothing to do with love. It's like, he, I think he's after like some sort of revenge with his brother, uh, the mountain. Okay. He's called the mountain that rides. He's a big giant guy. Okay. And he's also depicted in the uh, in the show as well, killing this fucking little little pink guy and crushing his skull. Um, but that that's the thing is, there these characters are not the type of characters that you can utilize in a uh, smutty, sexually appealing fashion. It, it's very difficult. I mean, um, Arya Stark, both in the books and in the show, is one of the least attractive, um, least physically appealing characters. Um, even even when she's of age, she's just she's just like, ugh, you know. Um, and that that's that's a good thing because not everybody has to be sexualized, and especially um, someone who starts the show at the age that she started at. Oh, uh, let's see. Somebody messaged me. Okay. Uh, per one of the people who was supposed to join in, bro, my bad, I'm cooking. Your ass should have started with the right now. I want to. <gasps> oh, uh, it's okay. Join anytime. Just text me when you do. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so... Arya is not sexually appealing, and it's a good thing because she started the show underage. I mean, there's other reasons why it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, and because not everybody needs to be sexualized, which I agree with. Well, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that um, this is specifically just in the way that um, George R. R. Martin writes and focuses, is that he oftentimes has his characters in very unpleasant situations. Mm-hmm. And it's very rarely, very, very rarely are they sexually unpleasant situations. Usually they are 
oh my god, I'm shitting my guts out situations, or oh my god, I'm I'm like crawling through a ditch full of corpses and I just ate somebody's ear, kind of situations. Um, and he doesn't he doesn't like censor himself in any capacity, and so where you have your have your typical writer who's going to be writing the female assassin to be this live sexy sly woo yeah i'm so but in reality in the case of aria and later on in the books she's just this woman with a knife going around stabbing people and poisoning people and being nasty and it's it's not a oh god oh yeah ooh it's a oh god oh no it's a <laughs> she she just drank a poisonous drink and she's blind now and now she's like on some sort of revenge path and then they 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 caught her fucking slitting somebody's throat in an alleyway and it's like oh my god this person is the most unpleasant just awful until you understand until you like you remember the context of like why she's doing what she's doing mm -hmm. and how it ties in we're specifically talking about the books we're not talking about the tv show the, the tv show goes completely off the rails um well i'm looking forward to that actually i'm i'm currently audio booking the very first book in the series um and I got like a, a magazine that like goes over the the series of the the TV show that I'm going to start watching the TV show. They had her assassinate the Night King. Okay, it's ridiculous. The Night King. It just doesn't. That's dumb. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and and the whole entire concept of that happening was just horrible. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. So this this entire thing that's that, that's been written here. Uh, I, I have to refrain from saying certain things, but um, it's it's very unsettling. You're gonna see. Okay, we'll continue. Yeah, just continue. All right, where are we going? She looks up at him with a slightly confused look on her face. It is not usual that they keep to the roads until she sees the inn. Why on earth are we here? Her voice took on a slightly angry tone, which I um, demonstrated by sounding exactly like Cecile Caldwell, <laughs> wondering why they had stopped so early in the day. I told you, I'm thirsty. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sandor scowls and gets down from the horse and ties him to a post, then lifts Arya off and plunks her on the ground, turning on her with harsh words. Now remember, if anyone asks, I'm your father. Oh, oh, that's unsettling. Okay. And don't bloody well tell anyone where we're going. He stalks. Don't tell. It, but she just asked where we go. Okay. What well, you know? Whatever. Whatever. He stalks off into the inn and throws a couple copper stars on the bar. Innkeep. A flagon of sour red. This is so rushed. It's just bad. It is. It's so rushed. Like we've bar we're barely okay. So if if somebody just glosses over this. They're going to have no idea where the fuck they're at right now. They're going to have no idea what the context is. It's just going to be, oh, they're just somewhere? <laughs> they're in an inn, apparently. And then, look, there's no fucking here. There's, like, no uh, the formatting. Like, there's no enter between the paragraphs here. So, uh, lowercase she at the beginning of the sentence. That's a party foul. Uh, am I screening? Yes. Um, she glared at him as he lifted her down and set her to her feet. Her father, indeed, she would rather eat nails and say Wait, 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 what? Didn't he just, like, walk into the inn and throw some coins on the bar or whatever? He, let's see, he lifted her up, plunked her on the ground, and then stalked off to the inn and threw a couple copper stars on the bar. So why are we going back over to the, why? She glared at him as he lifted her down and set her to a feet. Oh, did this start off as a role play? Because oh that, that's the only way that that makes sense. Uh, her father, indeed, she would rather eat nails. It has, to, it has to have been a role play. It's the only way it makes any sense. And yeah. Even that doesn't make any sense at all. Then say such a thing. Then being like, okay, I will eat dinner and then go to bed. Not then say such a thing. Like, I would rather burn in hell than uh, have sex with the hunchback of San Jose. Um, anyway. And hoped no one would bother asking her about such things. Her first instinct, once he set her down, was to turn around and stride off on her own. But she knew that would be folly for many reasons. Okay, isn't this this is the lady who like goes around stabbing people and assassinating? Why doesn't she just stab him? 
Why, why is she not trying to kill him right now? This is bad writing. Okay, so you're saying that um, in a realistic context, if she was written in character, she would have already killed him? In a realistic context, they would never go to an end. You know what? That's fair. Okay. One, she didn't have the slightest idea where she was or even how to get where they were going from here. Well, that you know what? That makes three of us. I don't know where she is either. Two, she, for some reason, she is capitalized, was unarmed, and that was dangerous for someone of her nature. And starting a sentence with a lowercase letter again, both young and a That's, female. None of this is, this is just ridiculous. So, uh, first of all, Arya doesn't think about herself from the standpoint of being vulnerable outside of, like, very specific situations. Um She's very much like a, I'm going to grab the first thing I, she, she was trained as a swordsman, or a swordswoman, rather, uh, using a rapier, right? It's okay, you can say swordsman, we don't care. <laughs> anyway, um, and so, basically, any any kind of, like, sharp object or, like, weapon of any kind, she seriously thinks about using it in some capacity, or she's always looking for something that she can use to break out with or defend herself with. Uh, she's not somebody who just, like, oh, help me, I'm a helpless damsel. No, no, she's not. There's several points in the story where even before she um, goes to Bravos and becomes an assassin, she kills people. And um, usually usually it's not, it's not, you know, the typical, oh, well, you know, she got lucky and he ran into her sword or something. No. <laughs> No, like, there's definitely, from the style of the writing and the way that it's portrayed, she is actively taking action to kill a person and killing them. And in some some degrees, some situations, reveling in it, um, specifically in, in the, the revenge aspect. Um, but she's, she's, not, she's not somebody who's like, oh, I'm weak and helpless. I need somebody to defend me. Um, I think that... There was one point in the story where she was sick, and she was a little bit like that, but it wasn't, like, nowhere near the level that's being portrayed here. So this is just another case of completely off, awful characterization, bad writing, uh, railroaded story. This story is so railroaded, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, it's railroaded completely out of any, any sort of realism from anything related to the book. So... We can basically classify this as two characters that are named the Hound and Arya, but are not in any way related to the games, Game of Thrones universe. Oh, so uh, that would be what um, Dominic Noble refers to as in name only. Yeah, in name only. <laughs> that, that's where that's where we're already at in in name only territory. How many chapters of this is, is there? Uh, there are five chapters. We are a few paragraphs into chapter one. So we're a few paragraphs in, and we're already at in in name only territory. So this this can't even really even be classified uh, as a uh, Game of Thrones fan fiction. It's just. Um, well, just somebody's fantasies being played out very poorly. All right. Shall we continue? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And three, though he would find it amusing that she would run from him, he would wait and then come after her and catch her. And his measures of how he would bring her back would be far too embarrassing than just cooperating. So this is the wrong usage of two. This is the wrong usage of them. Anyway, so she swallowed her bitter words and followed quietly behind him, sitting at his side as he drank his wine. Her eyes flit around the room subconsciously. Oh, so now we're in present tense. Okay. Looking quickly at all within the room before looking away and sighing softly to herself. I'm sorry, that sounds nothing like the badass that you just described to me before. Yeah, no, when, whenever she tried to escape, he'd like hit her in the head with the blunt side of his sword or an axe or something. So they should show that then. Okay. Sandor returns quickly, pours her a cup, and waters it down. That sentence was a disaster and ought to be taken out and shot. Here, probably going... I'm sorry. Here, probably gonna be a long time since you get anything to drink without something swimming in it. This usage of in it is the British, like, isn't it. 
it's it's a basically a contraction like gonna so that's wrong let's see he scans the patrons of the tavern wondering if any of his brother's men are here seeing none he wait wouldn't he do that before ordering a drink that's what I would do before ordering a drink. He would never even go into an inn because that's that's like like it's not it's not just his brother's men. It's also the rebels. It's also the fucking mercenary guys that were fighting. Uh, it's the phrase to some extent. It's literally everyone, literally everyone. So like he remember that he isn't doing this to protect her necessarily. He's doing this for his own gain. Mm -hmm. um so like it's it's nothing like how it is with uh what's her name again the the female the 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 night chick who like what's her name her name, I think her name was like brianna or something like that but she was this like insanely powerful swordsman and um she was trying to protect aria for a while mm -hmm. And I think she was protecting Sansa at some point, but she's there's there's it's nothing like that. Um, the Hound is not the the Hound is vulnerable to everybody, including Arya, mm -hmm. and he's aware of this in the writing. Mm -hmm. And it is it is somewhat depicted in the show, but um, there's a lot of things that like. I think they did an okay job depicting in the show. I think that at this point in the story, everybody kind of the the Hound and Arya thing is kind of like a background thing to the stuff that's going on with with John at this point in the story. Mm -hmm. Like in the in the show specifically, in, in the book it's different, but in the show people are far more interested in like what the fuck is John doing? What's he doing? What's going on with the the North and this other shit and yada yada. Um, so in trope terms, that is actually called. Um, hero of another story when like people are um everybody is kind of like the focus is on character set a but character set b is like doing their own other thing and it's like equally as interesting except this isn't so yeah so um i just i just feel like like i said where we are out of um where we're in the in-name only territory and we're getting further and further into that territory every second. Okay. So, oh, I got to put the screen share back on. Um, let's see. Seeing none, he's, let's see. Seeing none, he sits in the corner facing the door, frowning into his cup, wondering what the fuck he's going to do with the Stark bitch now that her mother and brother are dead. She takes the drink and looks up at, I don't know why Sandor is underlined, but... She takes a drink and looks up at Sandor before sniffing it and then drinking it. The taste is bitter and it slightly burns as it goes down her throat, and she never cared for the taste, but it is filling, quenching her thirst for now. She follows the hound and goes to sit across from him, her back to the door, not a sitting arrangement that she likes, and sits quietly, lost in thought. The death of her mother and brother are still to new. Hey, Arya, instead of that wine... Would you like some coffee? It's nice and warm. Warmer than your dead family. Yep. Anyway. Uh, it is not registered inside her yet as she tries to process it. Yet she knows that when it hits her, she will bury it deep inside for no one sees her cry. Most certainly not the hound. Casting her eyes up to his and just stares for a moment. I'm sorry. Casting her eyes up to his and just stares for a moment. That, that makes no sense. This was a role play. Before finding her voice and quietly whispers, So, where are we going? This is like the third time she's asked that, isn't it? Second, third. What I'm really wondering is, why is there so much redundancy? We already know where they're going. We already know what's happening. Why not, instead of peppering everybody with the already answered questions we just have a you know an actual fluid character development that would make this situation that we're going to be dealing with soon believable i just feel like it's another missed opportunity and um also there's no descriptions of anybody else in the bar besides now 
That's true. They never, like, mentioned the barkeep, what he looks like. They didn't even say, like, what the bar itself looks like. There is a name. No usually, usually these bars, these, uh, these inns in Westeros have names. Usually, even if they can't necessarily read the name, you'd be, like, scrawled on a wooden sign very poorly or something. And then there'd be, like, a description of the smell and the sound of people inside the bar and then, like, People, this guy wearing a cape leered at you as you were entering. Like, like there would be an actual description of what's going on. Besides, they went they went to a bar, and immediately just, um, and also, there was always a sense of, like, alertness and like concern, specifically in the books, because you'd be like, oh shit, well, what if what if they get found, or who are these people that are in this bar and. You know, some of these guys look pretty shifty. They don't look like good news. And I, this this is specifically not, when I say who are these people in this bar or in this inn, it was specifically not pertaining to Arya and Hound. It was, you know, another character going into an inn. Or actually, there was a part of the story where Arya did go in, into an inn. Um, when she was, she was trying to go north, I believe. And basically, it was very clear from the writing that she was, like, this close to being, like, sold into slavery or something. And, like, everything she had was stolen from her, except for her sword, which she slept on. Mm -hmm. And her clothes, of course. Mm -hmm. But, like, she was not safe. Yeah. So, like, um, that's, the, that's the whole thing is... None of that is present in this. The, the, there's no atmospheric establishment of any kind. Uh, it's just they're in, in an inn, and she's asking the same question again that everybody already knows the answer to. Well, to be fair, I also suck at atmospheric description. Like in one of my fanfics, we have the characters are in a hospital. There's no description whatsoever of the hospital. Just take our word for it. They're in a hospital, okay? And the nurse may or may not be ghosts. Right. But that's you don't really need that for years because the whole entire thing that makes characters from George R. R. Martin's writing appealing is where they're at okay. oftentimes. Um, and so if you don't have a proper explanation of where they're at and what they're facing, what they're dealing with, um, and combine that with the already poor writing in general, uh, you don't have anything really. So, Establishing an atmosphere and a feeling that draws the person into the story is like a fundamental thing. It's part of the reason why I had such a hard time doing my own writing when I got older mm -hmm. is because I wanted a certain atmosphere to be, be portrayed, but I always had a challenge with it. I always had a challenge of like writing it out in a way that, um, you know, sounded right. Um... But this is just lazy, and it's it's very clearly just somebody enacting their uh, I'm home alone watching Game of Thrones fantasies. <laughs> Would it be fair to say that this person may have been typing with the use of only one hand? It's obvious. Okay. I just I just wanted yeah, to make sure we were on the same that, page. But that's what's, yeah. This is very much, uh, yeah, that type of material. All right. Sandor glances up from his cup at the sound of her voice and looks at her for a long time, then finally saying, dot, dot, dot. I could take you to the Vale to be with your aunt, dot, 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 or maybe to River Run. Your uncle would be there. The Blackfish, dot, dot, dot. He scowls as he says the name. Either way, I should be able to ransom you back to them and get on my bloody way. Where to? The old gods and the new only know, dot, dot, dot. She made a face at the mention of the veil. She had no desire to go there and be around people who are simple-minded, even though they were family. That's something <laughs> she would never care about. I think it's pretty rich for somebody who's writing this to refer to other people as simple-minded. Like, Arya, Arya was not, not, not the type of person to, you know, have a thing against people who are simple-minded or that are... Like, she wasn't she wasn't the stuck up bitch and like that statement saying just that statement on its own especially with like the way that she's already portrayed in this 
makes the character look, look like a stuck up bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, Arya was a princess, but she didn't act very much like a princess at all. Yeah, no, the princessy one was her sister Sansa, wasn't it? Yeah, but even yeah. Sansa wasn't like that either. No, was... um, I'm just like, forgive me. Uh, I am. Um, I've just cleared the chapter where it's like, um, Arya hates needlework, and also she just named her direwolf. So I'm very early on in the story. Yeah. And then Sansa's like making eyes at Prince Joffrey. Like that's where that's where I'm at. That's like the knowledge base that I have. But even then, I did not get you know the sense that. You know that Arya is really the princessy type. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Um. Lem, 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 lem. Uh. She took a sip of her watered down wine and sighed softly, playing with her cup as she thought. You still planning on ransoming me off? She averts her eyes up to yours, up to mine. What? No, I'm not here. I mean, you know what I mean. Why would she avert her eyes up to mine? I'm sorry, did she avert her eyes up to yours instead? I'm so confused. Curiousness. Do you mean curiosity? Flickering in them for just a moment. How do you know they will give you what you ask for? Lifts her cup and sips again, watching him. Why do we have to go to either place? Finishes her drink and stares at him back, her eyes just as piercing and probing as if testing him. Why can't you take me back to Winterfell? Or to the docks. I might could catch a boat there. I might could. Okay. She trails off in sighs, looking away. Her eyes narrowed at the hound snorts. I don't ask for much. I'll be selling my sword for the rest of my days, I reckon. I could give you safe passage to the docks, I suppose. Dot, dot. He replied gruffly. You're pinching your nose as if in thought. Just, just keep going. It's, it's just, there's so many problems with this. We'd be here for days talking about it. <laughs> he replied gruffly. He slurps his wine and looks at Arya, curious as well, but he hides it badly or tries not to hide it at all. I'm sorry, which which is it? I'm, I'm confused. If you want a boat, you'll need help securing a ride with those bastard captains. You think I'm bad? They're worse than I am. He smirks as he gazes at her. But why would a wolf girl want to go across the narrow sea? He asks as he looks at her suspiciously. She pauses a moment before. I'm sorry. She pause a moment before answering, weighing whether or not to trust him with a direct answer. Yes. I have only to get to the docks. I have safe passage to where I am headed. The reasons are my own. She was not aware that she oh had oh my god why okay you need to share your thoughts if you're why? gonna say that it's so awful like we're, <laughs> we've already been over this like twice three times already it's just redundant okay it's like the same redundant what are we doing where are we going 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 you know what that reminds me of are we there yet not yet are we there yet? Not yet. Except Are we there for the yet? fact, except for the fact that Lucius's <laughs> Coco Melon song is far more interesting. Oh my god! <laughs> and that is really saying something because that's that's a literal baby show for babies. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, um, I have only to get to the docks. I have safe passage to where I am headed. The reasons are my own. She was not aware that she had taken out the coin J-A-Q-E-N. How do you pronounce that? Jacken? Jake? I'm sorry, I don't know. Why the fuck would this even be included? Had given her and was fumbling with it under the table in her nervous habit of hers as she stared hard at him in return. Why would the hound wish to sell off the wolf girl? She questions his question. <gasps> 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 oh. <laughs> what do you what's on your mind? Why? <laughs> why the fuck is this why? That's the literal point of her existence with him is he's going to sell her for money. That's the entire 
the, that entire story arc, their all of their interaction is, "Hi, I'm a guy, and I want money, and you're you're royalty, and I'm gonna sell you to for, to ransom, and I'm, I'm gonna ransom you to somebody, and you're gonna cope." That that's their entire <laughs> their, that's their entire relationship. That's their entire existence. That's how they meet. That's everything that they are. Is hi, you're worth some money. I want money. I'm taking you to go and sell you for money, and I'm gonna fuck off. <laughs> why the fuck are, are are they being like? But would you? Why would you sell the wolf? What the fuck else are you gonna do? Like, especially especially because um, just in general, like the hound wasn't a character who. Uh, he he didn't really seem to have any sort of attraction to anyone. I think I think there was like some sort of love interest that he had very briefly, or like she was like mentioned or something, and like like her brother his, his brother killed her or something. Uh, but like he he was never somebody who had anything, uh, any kind of interest outside of like what he wanted to do with like money or oh I want I want to try and get revenge against my brother. Like he was never a character who was like. Well, I don't know now. <laughs> like even even after, so his his first objective was to just take her to uh, whoever was fighting the like wh whoever was on either side and offer more money. Um, I think there was a reason why he didn't take her to the Lannisters. Um, I think either like he was wanted by them or some sort of dispute or something happened. Wait one sec, one one sec actually. But um yeah, so he basically was, you know, I think he did work for the Lannisters for a while, but then I think he like had some sort of falling out with them. And then so that's why he wasn't going back to them. And so he was trying to go to Rob or trying to go to um, you know, Blackfish or to the Vale. Uh I, I just I just don't like it. I don't like how um We've already explained the setting. We've already explained. We've already had the characters redundantly go over the setting. And now we're just coming up with some very, very poor, uh, very, very poor railroading into what exactly? I don't know. I mean, I, I know, I know what, what this is going to go into, but I don't, I don't like, I don't like where it's going and I don't know where. It's going to go before that point, but I know it's not going to be good. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically that. Uh, pretty, pretty annoyed. I also think that mentioning Jack and Hagar in any capacity in this was just, like, fucking insulting. Um, because... First of all, the whole entire that whole entire part of the story it, it, it has a much bigger impact in the in um, the original writing and actually even in the show to some extent than is very poorly depicted here. I I suspect that um, his name will be mentioned once here and then never again. Actually, I hope for that because that's like the only possible scenario where uh, I'd be okay with it. I'm not okay with it, but I'd be close to okay with it, rather. Um, so, yeah. Not fond of that. And then, um, like I said, who, who else is who else is in, at the end, right? Who else is there? Is there anybody there? Anyone? Like, there's no descriptions of anybody at the inn. They didn't even describe the barkeep. They didn't even describe what the inn looks like. Um, they didn't describe the name of the inn. They didn't describe what it smelled like, what it looked like, how many people were there. If there was, like, an upstairs area, if it was, like, connected to a brothel, if there was, like, uh, a fucking outhouse or something next to it. You know what would have been more interesting is if it had been connected to a brothel. And then the hound went off with some horror, and then Arya just escaped the end. 
Right, but that'd actually be a decent story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shall we continue? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to keep that up. Okay. She's not aware she had taken out the coin, what's this fuck whose name I can't pronounce, had given her and was fumbling with it under the table, that nervous. Oh, okay, so here we go. She questions the question. It might suit his needs better if he saw her safely to the docks. Looks down at the coin in her hands and sighs softly again for like the third fucking time. Or go with her across the narrow sea. She froze. She had no idea why she said that. Well, it, obviously it's because the writer has her hand up her, uh, up her ass and is making you talk. But it was true, it would be safer for both of them across the narrow sea, and he could do much better than a cell sword. I'm sorry, he could do much better than a cell sword. No, so he can't. He cannot do much better than a cell sword. Half his face is fucking melted. Okay. Mm -hmm. He doesn't he doesn't have like any ties to royalty. The only reason why he's a knight, I'm pretty sure, is because of his like there's some sort of thing with like his, his dad or something. But like he isn't, he is he himself is not royalty as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then going across the narrow sea, he doesn't know anything about anything across. Like nobody in Westeros has any fucking clue. They they they, they hear like tales. Of some of them, some of them, and when I say some of them, I do not refer to characters like the Hound. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the Hound has no interest in anything pertaining to anywhere outside of Westeros. Okay. Everything he does and everything he's interested in, in is in the south, near King's Landing. That, that's like that's like where everything. Like I guess I guess he like goes a little bit further south, or like I think he has some like stuff that happens. Uh, he's, he's in like a few wars, but like he doesn't he doesn't care about what's going on outside of the rest of the world, or out, out, outside in the rest of the world, I should say. Um, he doesn't give a shit about it, and. His entire existence is being a sellsword and getting revenge. Um, there's like some other things that he's like in, sort of, but like it's sort of alluded by other characters or mentioned vaguely, not things that he's currently doing. Um, so he's a very, very brash, violent, angry man who's like getting old and. Yeah. You know, he's just, yeah, he's just not in a, in a state of mind to be concerned about going on a vacation to the Bahamas or something. <laughs> like it's just, it's just dumb that they would write it out like this. Oh, he he'd be doing much better. Doing what? Doing what? Hooking. <laughs> like he's he's not gonna gain anything out there. Okay. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, Sandor smirked down at her, finding her spirit amusing. Spare me your secretiveness, wolf girl. I'm not by the I'm not bothered either way. He glances at the doorway and looks back at her. You think you have safe passage? Sometimes you're not as smart as you think you are. They all be thieves and bastards, those men of the sea. I'll give I'll get you safe passage. There's nothing left for me here. He states plainly as he leans back in his chair with a dismal look and slurps more wine. You really shouldn't drink so much, she says softly. Would she care? I feel no, like she wouldn't care. She wouldn't give a shit. Under her breath as she She won't even mention it. As she watches him down yet another flagon of wine, tucking the coin back into her pocket and leans back in her chair. He had promised her safe passage. She would hold him to it and travel with him long as he kept his promise. One sign that he would sell her off and she would slip his grip faster than a greased cat. Um, but isn't that why? Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. She was no one's property to be bought and sold. Crossing her arms, she watched him through her eye lashes, waiting for him to finish. At her words, Sandor glared at her, his eyes hiding the smoldering anger behind them. The fact that the camera isn't on is hiding the fact that we are both face palming. <laughs> what are you, my mother? I'll drink what I want. He slams the flagon down and goes to get up from his chair, wavering a bit. Stay here. I gotta go water a tree. 
He says gruffly as he stalks towards the door, shoving a servant out of the way. Oh, so there's servants here. Finally, there's a person. <laughs> a, a, another person. <gasps> wow. <laughs> she glares back at him at his show. She shook her head. Oh, we keep switching back between past and present tense. Uh, she shook her head as she waited for him to return, wondering what on earth she had gotten herself into. No, if I was your mother, you would be better behaved, whispers softly to herself and smirks, hiding it before he came back. She no. Knew... no. No? No. No. She knew he acted all tough, but on the inside, he wasn't so bad. What, did she shove her hand up his ass, too, to determine whether he's not anyone. so bad inside? What? This, isn't, this, this, this is just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. The way this is written, there's no point in the story where she can actually like learn anything about how he really is it's just like there's no character development it's just oh suddenly she's slightly she's like slightly attracted to him or she thinks that she he's better than whatever it's it's awful why did people like that think they had to act a certain way hide things she didn't understand it at all huffing under her breath she crossed her arms and sat back in her chair hoping he would return soon. She didn't like the way a few of the men sitting near the back were looking at her. Oh, oh, finally! Finally! Other people, wow. Um, or in her general direction from time to time. While he was away, it gave her time to ponder her earlier words. Why on earth had she suggested him to come with her to Bravos? She hated him, didn't she? She had tried on more than one occasion to kill him in his sleep, but every time he surprised her when he woke up and threatened her. After the last time where he threatened to break both her hands, she had just stopped trying to catch him unawares, but always was on the lookout for a way to get at him. So why in the seven hells did she ask him to come with her? Shaking her head, she sat back in her chair and waited for the hound to return. She nearly jumped her out of her skin when he kicks the door open and comes in, seeing her sitting there with a sour look on her face and notices the men in the corner. Fuck you, Polliver! She's not for you! He raged at a smaller man who had been staring at her in open lust as he glares at him and- Wait, wait, what? Who the fuck is Polliver? What? And comes back to sit down, keeping an eye on him. Fucking knights, they can all bugger themselves, looks at her with a scowl. How come you're all in a snit? Are you hungry? He waves a serving wench over and gets even more frustrated when he sees the look in her eyes as she gazes at, at him. Gazes at him. Bring the girl a bowl of brown or summit. He flicks her a copper star and the serving girl went quickly to fill his order. Arya had not realized her hunger till he mentioned it and dug in hungrily as a serving wench. Wow. She was hungry because she didn't realize her hunger. We all have that hunger. We're hunger and hungries and something. Let's see. Dug in hungrily as a serving one set the bowl of food before her. You know, I'm imagining her doing this. Okay, you can't see me, but okay, here's the bowl. Yeah. Eating out of it like a dog. Before she remembered her manners. Eating slower. Oh, that reminds me of that scene in Beauty and the Beast where Beast is doing exactly that and then Belle shows him to just use his spoon or something. Anyway, did she cast her glance up at him, watching him as he watched her? She had a hard time guessing what he was thinking and that disturbed her. Usually she was very good at guessing one's thoughts. One being, one's being plural. Mm, no. No? No. Arya did not have that quality in canon? Not really, no. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. She said softly as she finished up her food and sat back again in her chair. Her green eyes pierced into his nearly sky blue ones, trying to figure out exactly who he was. He was both fire and ice, hate and love. I'm sorry, what? What? Robber and lawmaker. Where is this? This is such a... What? This, this whole entire section of description is just inaccurate. So you have someone who knows nothing about Game of Thrones, and then you have someone who uh, is familiar with Game of Thrones, and then you have the writer of this fic who knows less than me, apparently. 
there i feel like this person is just like going on a romantic flight of fancy tangent in this part that's Ooh. what i think it is ah. just say oh he was ice and fire love and hate and other generic statements <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, robber and lawmaker, and though she loved riddles at times, she could not for the life of her figure him out. Yeah, because she's ascribing qualities to him that he does not have. So this is a this is a thing I've noticed in this type of writing. Mm -hmm. um, is where, and this, this is specifically in role plays, mm -hmm. where neither of the writers, and there, there can be more than more than two writers, right? Of course have any fucking clue how to move the story onward so what you're seeing in this entire thing is just them going back and forth with he glared at her she looked at him he she glanced at him she looked he, he glared at her blah blah and it's just these interactions are very very slow because neither of them know how to actually put the story in a direction that's interesting so instead as a natural side effect, they are oops, just repeating the exact same interaction. So I was trying to look this up on my computer, but apparently I no longer have that fic on my computer. But I actually had this problem uh, when I was about 20. I was writing with someone. Um, and we were writing a Vex and Marluxia fic, you know, because we were with Kingdom Hearts and that was our, um, that was our shit. Okay. And... I was ready to move on from the dinner scene. I was like, okay, well, Marluxia finished eating and then, you know, was waiting for Vexen. And then Vexen twirled one noodle around his fork and took a bite. And my next response was, time passed. <laughs> because, like, I, I, I get sick of that. I cannot just sit there indefinitely, like letting things happen in slow motion i've got plot points to get to buddy boy i just do or buddy girl you know i just so, do yeah um that's the theme i've noticed in this is all the dialogue all the interactions are just that happening over and over again it's padding it's it's not just padding it's like the two writers are going back and forth going back and forth going back and forth and then the story slowly slides into <laughs> something and then by the time you get there you're just like because ah, ah, ah. it just you, you just lost any any sense of like interest you know dof has better pacing than this dof my show is absolute garbage and it has better pacing than right this. but like dof has something happening all the time it does that's true and but that was also a role play it was between Corey and myself despite how vague and sometimes just like abysmally bad some of the characters and some of the settings are there's still like a lot more going on and the the whole like rebounding thing is like it's it's supplemented and properly managed by the other characters pointing and laughing <laughs> and fucking bickering oh yeah you know commentary actually does pretty much make the show okay so let's let's continue here um lem, 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 lem. okay if he was planning on selling her, why did he agree to take her to the docks? He will say anything. He will say any. Oh my god. He will like to to fulfill his goal. Ugh. I don't know if that's the case with him, but that's like basic fucking common sense when you're dealing with people. Why did she trust him when she knew on some small level that she shouldn't? Because she's fucking stupid. Apparently, she lost all her brain cells snorting air out through her nose did she stare at him wondering how long till he lashed out at her for doing so he stares back at her for a long time curious about the cross between scared little girl and fierce killer that's sitting before him finally saying to her was she ever a scared little girl did was there any indication of that canonically with him no <laughs> just checking i'll give you one thing wolf girl you're not afraid to look at my face. He was still not sure what to do with her. Ransom her? And then what? The money runs out and he's back where he started. On the run from King's Landing. She met his gaze with fire in her eyes. Hellfire. Dark fire. I'm sorry. As she paused in eating her meal. 
Why should I be afraid to look at you? Quips back softly. I don't see anything wrong with you or the way you look. She says honestly, because in fact, she didn't. That was redundant. It's as in plural it, just a scar, and I have lots of those. Some heal in time, others do not. Our looks do not make us who we are. Our actions do nothing more. <laughs> Sorry. She places her elbows upon the table and rests her chin in her hands as she watches him more closely. Did she hit a nerve? She couldn't tell. Are we just going to sit here till evening, or are we going to get going? What exactly are your plans? Again? So the in-character hound would have literally just, like, struck her across the face and told her to shut the fuck up long before this point. You know, I fucking wish a nigga would. I wish he would. Uh, yeah. She asks, being curiously nosy. He looked at her skeptically, not used to hearing kind words, opens his mouth to say summit, then shuts it again, cocks his head and looks at her, a bit hazy from the wine, decides to answer her question instead. Instead of smacking her across the face, I guess. We should probably get a couple rooms for the night. No! Traveling at night is precarious at the best of times. We'll ride come first light towards the salt pans. We can get a ship there. She looks out the door and sees the coming of the night and then looks around the inn and back at him. Was it odd of her that she would feel much safer sleeping out under the stars than in this rat-infested hole? So many men came and went since they got here, and some were not so subtle in hiding their lecherous looks at her direction. Fine, she looked back at Pitsandor, her face serious, but I get to keep your dagger for the night. You know, I feel like if someone tried to rape her, she'd just, like, slit their belly. That, that's another thing is, like, Arya in the books and in the, in the TV show as well to some extent did not really look very womanlike. Like, yeah. specifically in the books, she... She basically passed off as like a boy most. Of the I've time. seen I've seen pictures of her where she looks pretty uh, masculine. She look she she's definitely a tomboy. She's very plain. Um, they chose they chose a really good actress for that role, but she's very plain. Um, you could easily mistake her for a boy at a glance. There's nothing really womanly about her. Yeah, she always looked she looked always looked kind of rugged and disheveled. She mm -hmm. didn't she didn't look like you know this like. I don't think there was any any point in the story where like anybody was interested in her sexually in any capacity. Good. Um, I think she had like a very brief, brief like almost love interest with like uh, a stable boy, but like he died or something. I don't remember what it was, but she was like, "Oh, it was my friend." It was never like at the level of like, "Ooh, yeah, he's my friend." You know, it was. It was. It, it's like I said. It's it's very difficult if not just outright impossible to sexualize these characters without just completely removing everything that made them these characters um it's just it's not like okay so a, a really good example right so um in elden ring which has a lot of stuff that's from or like the writer who wrote game of thrones and wrote uh Song of Ice and Fire also oh, did writing for Alden Ring. Um, one of the characters, Melina, um, has very fair features and like looks okay, right? But is also very unsettling. Um, and despite being very easily or theoretically depicted in a sexually appealing manner, she is not sexually appealing in any capacity. Um, she's very monotone, inhuman. It's implied that she wasn't even, um, born. Pro like she, she's not, she's not, she's not human and she's not natural. She's like a robot almost. Um, so, you know, a lot of the characters that are like that, uh, whenever they're portrayed in a sexual situation, it's very off-putting, and it's very, um, it's, just, it's just not right. Like, it just doesn't feel right, you know? Um, I, I totally understand, like, the lonely nerd who wants to fap, or the, in this case, the, I assume, woman who, you know, is at home and writing this with one hand and trying to get off from the, the uh, 
uh, sexual and uh, romantic stuff that they're trying to write. Um, but it doesn't, it just doesn't work. Um, doesn't work at all. I think that it's, it's just, it's getting harder to, to sit through this. So, um, I'm probably going to concede defeat, so to speak, in a matter of time. Because, yeah, this is definitely not, um, not something I want to just endure forever. This is pretty awful. Let's see. Um, so, yeah, the whole, like, knights looking at her lustily or whatever, and just, it's not, that's inaccurate. That's not what happened in the story. Nobody ever saw her as a sexual object. Um, I think that any man who wanted her either wanted her to sell or to kill or to maybe sell her into slavery. But, like, there was never a situation where it was, like, you know, uh, a sexual thing in any capacity. It was always just, let's kill her! Or, I'm going to sell her for money, which is what the hound was trying to do. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Fine, but I get to keep your dagger for the night. He, crashy granite heron, chuckles softly, such a fiery little wolf. Fine, fine, dot, dot. He hands her his parrying knife with a slight smirk, almost as if he were teasing her a bee. Uh, don't worry, I won't let anyone near you. They'd be stupid to try. His parrying knife? His parrying knife. He didn't have a parrying knife. He didn't? No! He was not the kind of character to parry anything. Why is he handing her a parrying knife? He had, I think he had a sword, a shield, and an axe. And maybe a couple daggers, but like... Wait, do they mean like a paring knife? Like what you use to cut fruit? No, like a parrying knife. Oh, so it's a different... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. even then, like the entire... No, no, it's okay. The entire concept of a parrying knife in Westeros. That, that's like that's like a thing that like the Bravosi would have. Mm -hmm. Or like the fucking people in Dorne might have. That's not a thing that a Westerosi knight or mercenary would have. Unless they, of course, were schooled in... Dornish spear fighting or some random shit, which he is not in any capacity. So he does not, he's, he, no, he would never have a parrying knife. And if he had a parrying knife, he wouldn't even realize it was a parrying knife and he wouldn't even be able to use it. He's, he's a, the classical sword and board, you know, I'm going to fucking bash you and then stab you or slash you or hack your fucking hand off with an axe and then let you bleed to death. Or I'm going to just, you know, just slam into you with, with using my, my body weight and my armor and just like knock you to the ground and then like kick or stab the crap out of you. You know, he wasn't, he, he was not, um, I think, I think the entire reason why he won the fight against, uh, the leader of the, the brotherhood, that uh, Brotherhood of Light or whatever um, was because he was just so brutal and just so just like persistent. Um, he wasn't he wasn't parrying. He was like knocking aside blows and like you know and, like slamming things and like making making him uh, fucking get all off balance so he just knocked his weapon out of his hand and then he eventually killed the guy. And that's the way he was depicted in any fighting situation. He was always just like this guy who was using every all of his grit mm -hmm. and just throwing himself into it with everything he's got. And like uh, that that's in very sharp contrast to like somebody like uh, the Prince of Dorne who the mountain kills, right? Where like he's like doing all this stylish, fancy stuff and he's got a poisonous but poisonous spear. And he's like you know, doing all these like stylish maneuvers and like flips and shit, you know? And it's like, wah, yeah, look at me. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know. Um 
it's just it's it doesn't make any sense for him to have a parrying dagger. Actually, it makes no fucking sense for him to give her a weapon at all. It doesn't. It just like because it's, it's even stated in the text of that this she's tried to kill him multiple times. And actually, also having her sleep in a separate room wouldn't happen. If there was a bed, she'd be sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Or she'd be tied to something and sleeping next to that. Yeah. Okay, let's... Uh... <clears throat> let's see. Get some rest. The journey over the narrow sea is a long one, and you may not sleep if the waves start heaving. He gets up and finds the innkeeper, tosses him a silver dragon, and motions for her to follow to the room upstairs. She scowled at his grin at her, but hid a smile under it at his laugh. She had never heard him laugh before. Taking his non-existent parrying knife from him, she tied it around her waist and followed after him, well aware of the heads that turned slightly at their departure. She kept her senses on alert as they transversed the stairs. I'm pretty sure the word is traverse, but okay. No, transversed. Taking in everything as they made their way to the rooms. He unlocked the first door and hands her a key. Go through and take the room in the back. That way anyone who wants to fuck with you will have to go through me first. He turns and bolts his door, then flops on the flea-ridden bed, half exhausted and half drunk. Good night, wolf girl. He grumbles tiredly and dozes off. She takes the offered key and goes toward the back of the room and into another room. Good night, Sandor, shutting and locks the door behind her. However, when she looked around and she sighed softly and taking the blankets off the bed along with one small pillow, she took the dagger off her hip and put it under her pillow and laid down upon the floor rolling up in her blankets. Only as she fades into sleep does she feel the wetness of tears upon her face before she passes out into sweet oblivion dagger clutched tightly in her hand. He had awakened in the middle of the night to the sound of someone buggering with a lock on my door. The lock on my door? The buggering with the lock on my... I mean, yeah, you buggered with the lock on my door to feed me bacon earlier and so that I could give my son a goodnight kiss. That's different, though. Okay. Getting up and creeping towards it, standing next to it, waiting to see if the intruder will get past the lock. Bugger. Scowling, Sandor remembers he gave his knife to the girl. As the door creaks open, he grabs a damned thief by the throat and shove him against the rotting wooden wall, snarling in his face. So the rotting wooden wall should have broken at that. Should have just like... Why is there a rotting wooden wall? Mm. Arya had awakened instantly at the sound of scuffling from the other room, unsheathing the dagger space comma she crouches eyes trained on the door all senses instantly on alert slowly takes a few steps and dares to unlock the door and peek out it seems a thief was trying to break in and sandor caught them yet he has nothing but his sword to dispatch the intruder with and that would not work in close quarters lost in the moment trying what do you to mean that would not work in close quarters what the fuck he could literally just bash the guy in the brain with the pommel of the, of the fucking sword he did that. I'm pretty sure he did that at one point in the story where, like, they were fighting and, like, he was caught in, like, a bad position and he just went <laughs> <laughs> and, like, fucking bashed somebody's skull in or something. Like, he, he, there was a lot of fighting. And so, like, this entire situation is ridiculous. The Hound always sleeps in his armor, I'm pretty sure. And he always sleeps with, sleeps with his weapons. So... Oh no! I don't have the knife that I gave. No, dude. You, he always he always has his weapons, and also if he would never be in an he, he would never sleep in an inn. He'd never go to an inn. I think the only time he'd ever, he'd ever actually go to an inn would be like if he was one thousand percent sure that he was safe, or if it was to potentially get information. But he wouldn't he wouldn't sleep there, and I'm pretty sure he wouldn't even drink there. What he what he do is if he was gonna drink, he drink on the road, mm -hmm. or like sometimes he might camp, but he usually camp on his own. Like they 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 were very much concerned with not being found by the Lannisters because the Lannisters had like spies everywhere and shit, and there was like so many people who were like, oh look, that's the hound. I'm gonna kill him and get money, mm -hmm. right? So like, oh god, none of this would have happened. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, unsheathing the dagger, she crouches, eyes trained on the door. And says, uh, slowly takes a few steps and dares to unlock the door and peek out. It seems a thief was trying to break in and send or caught them, yet he has nothing but his sword to dispatch the intruder. Uh, okay, so lost in the moment, trying to process what she is seeing, is unaware that the door swings slightly on its own as she watches and only go stock still when she sees the intruder's eyes lock on her and he dare to let out a fleeting smile past his face. That sentence needs to be drawn and quartered. That is terrible. What the fuck is this writing? Growling, she grips the dagger hidden behind her back tightly in her hand and back up into her room a few paces, but it is too late. He knows of her. He has seen her. Drat! Drat seems like kind of a weak swear word for someone in the GOT verse. We have one, two, three. We we have four paragraphs left. I know. It's fine. Sandor sees the intruder glance at lowercase Arya and is filled with a strange feeling of jealousy and rage. Jeal what? Jealousy? What? 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 Jealousy. Jealousy? Jealousy. No, that makes sense. Jealousy. That makes no sense. He snarls at the thief as he grabs that moment to punch him hard in the face, shattering his teeth, then fling him to the floor and stand over him, sword drawn and tip pressed into his throat. Who are you and what do you want? Space question mark. He senses Arya standing in the doorway, watching everything, and turns to cast his eyes up to hers a moment before locking back on the prone man on the floor at his feet. Get your things, wolf girl. We're getting out of here. Slowly, he pushes the blade into the thief's Oh, neck. my God. He doesn't even, like, let the guy answer any of the questions and just kills him. That's so stupid. Why even ask him questions in the first place if you're just going to fucking kill him? Hey, it's where are so we dumb. Where are we going for dinner tomorrow? <laughs> I'm sure you would have liked to answer me, but I choke you out before you could. Like, the whole jealousy thing's dumb, makes no sense. There's no description of what the thief looks like or what it, what the expressions on the thief's face are, or even how tall he is or if he's armed or anything. There's nothing. It's just... Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> that's it. It's like it's like ask questions first, kill late, kill now. <laughs> like it doesn't make any fucking sense to have this. It's just dumb. God. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Slowly, he pushes the blade into the thief's neck, watching him gasp and gurgle and choke on his own blood. She doesn't have to be told twice. Not with the way the thief leered at her. Putting the dagger back into its scabbard and around her waist, did she dart back into her room and grab her cloak and put on her shoes before returning just in time to see Sandor shove his sword through the man's throat? Man's being plural man, although the plural for man is men, so I don't know why it says man's without an apostrophe. Anyway, staring down at the dying man, she feels strangely empty. No feelings as she watches him die. Nothing. What? Arya doesn't seem like the type to care whether someone... She literally has already seen her... her... She watched her dad get, get his head cut off. Mm -hmm. Like, she doesn't... This this shouldn't even be mentioned. So some rando being killed in front of her would not even evoke a reaction. Right? Not unless she felt like she was in danger. And even then it would be like, oh shit, kind of reaction. Not a, oh no, the guy died. No, she fucking saw people dying... Pretty much on like a daily basis at, at certain parts of the story. So the fact that it doesn't evoke an emotional reaction is unremarkable and thus should not be remarked upon, as you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. As he gasps out his last, does she turn and slide past Sandor and head towards the door without giving the now lifeless body a backward glance? Okay, but why would she? Why, why would we don't even know what he look what the lifeless body looks like. It's a lifeless body. It doesn't matter. It's a corpse. We have no information on what this. It has looks two like. usable holes. That's all you need to know about the lifeless body. And this isn't that kind of fic. Two usable holes. Because it's a lifeless body. Actually, four if you count the nostrils. Ew. <laughs> Six if you count the eye sockets. Eight if you count the ears. Nine if you count the belly button. <laughs> 
And then there's always the armpits, which are not holes. But anyway. You can make holes in them. Thank you. She says softly. She waits for him to gather his things. <laughs> Lighting just the tiniest smile, tinge her lips before hiding her emotions. Thank you for what? For what? <laughs> for, for, for killing a guy in front of me? This is so stupid. Killing what a guy, fuck? killing a thief who leered at her. He didn't even steal anything. The guy, but he was a thief who leered at her. He didn't even. We don't even know. We don't even. But have... he leered at her. <laughs> okay, so this person did not have any kind of description for his appearance. Correct. Okay. Did not steal anything. <laughs> Correct. I don't even think he properly opened the door. No, he was just fucking with the lock. So, they did not kill a thief. He might have just been some drunk guy trying to get in the wrong room. <laughs> they just killed a guy. They, they killed a guy fiddling with the lock. That poor bastard. Just some guy fiddling with the lock, and he just gets instantly I'm killed. Terribly sorry. This is the wrong. <laughs> we will never. We will never know. What he looks like, you'll we'll never know why he was there. You'll we'll never have any kind of information about this person ever. He could literally be anyone. He could be fucking Joe Biden. He could be anybody. <laughs> Joe Biden. He could be Joe Biden. Oh no. He could be Donald Trump. He could be fucking <laughs> Jeff Bezos. He could be Jeff literally Bezos. anyone. Okay. He could, he could actually be the real hound from the story. <laughs> Oh, he could be Zemn. He could be Xehanort. He could be Xehanort. Exactly. He, he could be. He could be Master Zokin. He could be literally anyone. He could be you. I wouldn't be there for that, and I also don't want to pick locks. Okay, you pick my lock. You pick the lock on my door. You have lock picking skill. Yeah, I realize that that's a very easy lock to pick, but still. Okay, anyway. Let's see. Letting just the tiniest smile tinge her lips before hiding her emotions back behind their door where they belong deep inside of her. It is still dark. Will we be able to find the road? He withdraws his sword from the man's neck. Wait, so um, her, her actions need to be separated from his dialogue by a paragraph break. But anyway. He withdraws his sword from the man's neck and wipes it on the bedclothes, glancing at you. What the fuck? Why is he looking at me? I don't want to be looked at. What the fuck? Why is he looking? Why is he looking at me? Because that's the only thing that they can do is. Why um, is he looking at me? I didn't do anything. Whoever wrote this, I'm not a part of the story. Doesn't know how to initiate romantic situations, and so it's just glances at you. Okay, but but it says glancing at you, not glancing at Arya. I, I'm not in the story. Why is he glancing because at me? Because it was originally a role play. We've been over this. But it's... Mm, it's awful. It's, a it's the kind of it. shit that you fix before you post it on fanfiction.net. Nobody's going to take time to fix this shit. You know what? I stopped editing One West Covina partway through after Piffy and I started sporking it just because it's funnier that way. It gives us more, more shit to mock. But I'm still going to go back and fucking edit it. Anyway... You're welcome. You okay? Sees a flicker of a grin and nods to her, letting her keep her secrets and her emotions hidden as she will. It'll be light soon enough. If you're still tired, you can sleep while we ride. I won't let you fall. He replies softly in hushed tones. Yes, softly implies hushed tones. Thank you. Thank you very much. As he grabs his stuff and walks with you. No, he's not walking with me. Go away. Down the stairs and out into the darkness of the courtyard towards the stables. When we reach there, we, who is we? Loki, when you and I reach there, I unhitch stranger who wickers at me softly. Oh. <laughs> Aye, boy, gonna get an early start. He puts on his tack and pack up his saddlebag, glancing at Arya every so often, puzzled by your soft-spoken, you know, I'm very puzzled by your soft-spoken demeanor. Have I, have I mentioned that today? Puzzled by your soft spoken demeanor. Soft spoken demeanor. This is so dumb. This but isn't... saying not then, he picks her up and puts so... her on the horse's back and climb up behind her. I mean, honestly, like most of the time that Arya was with the hound, it was she was covered in blood and muck or just like filthy. 
or gross. something. And there's nothing particularly appealing about her. So all those guys that were staring at her in the tavern, they're like, oh yeah, blood and muck, I want to stick my dick in that. No, this is just a case of whoever wrote this going with a, an idealized self-insert version and not the actual... Then part. write a fucking OC! This is pretty much the point where it's just an OC. It's not even the character. Uh, it's in name alone. In name only? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, together they continue down the river towards the salt pans just as the sun starts to come up. She nods back slightly and shrugs at his question. I am fine, not tired, dot dot, though in reality she didn't get much sleep and she was betting he didn't either. Turns and follows him down the steps trying to be quiet and towards the stables. I wait silently as he tack up stranger, saying nothing but watching closely and wondering of his thoughts as he catches him glancing at her every so often. Allows him to pick her up and put her astride the horse and holds on to his mane as he climbs up behind her and nudge him into a walk as we start. As we, you and I, start on our way. We, we are in the story now. We're invested. We are starting on our way. I don't want to be invested. Too bad. They wrote as we start on our way. No. She watches the sun rise slowly as we make our way down the road towards the salt pans, and as it finishes cresting the horizon, do her eyes close and she is Cresting the horizon. I'm sorry, cresting. I am so sorry. It says cresting. Why are you apologizing to me? Because I fucked up when I was reading it. Do her eyes close and she is asleep again. You fucked up now. Okay. So that was that was uh chapter one of Arya and the Hound. It was horrible. It was horrible, yes. It was really badly written. It was really badly written, yes. And none of the characters are even remotely in character. None of the characters are remotely in it character. It was a masturbatory fan fiction role play. And it was really obvious. And it was poorly edited. I don't think it was edited. Okay, that's worse. I think it was literally just copy-pasted and put on the fucking site. And that was it. That's worse. You know, I should do that with the rest of One West Covina. Not even bothering putting everything in the right order. Not even bothering having Word read it aloud to me to make sure it's not too repetitive. Just like, just post it up. I glance at you. I look into your fiery eyes. My eyes are not fiery right now. You glance at me and think about how I have a soft demeanor or something. I glance at you. <laughs> Where are we going? To Disneyland! You groan as you realize I, that Disneyland I, is all the fuck down in Anaheim and you have you wanna, no desire to drive us there. You want to take me to Disneyland? Why would you want to take me to Disneyland? That's strange. Even though Because it's the Disneyland. happiest place on, on Earth, even though well, it's in fucking it Anaheim. Place on Earth? Because I don't know. But where are we going? <laughs> Disneyland. You. Like, this, this, this the entire thing is just that. And then, like, the thief thing. I think the only character that was portrayed properly was the thief. <laughs> but he wasn't a thief. He was just some fucko jiggling the door. There isn't even any information on him. He's just he's just a guy who died. <laughs> oh wait, no, there, there was another character who was portrayed, I feel, really well. Really well there was accurately. a guy named Polliver too. No, there there was a guy there I'm sorry, there was a character who was portrayed really well and really accurately. Okay. I feel with just like the most in character person in this entire fic so far. The serving wench. Oh yes. Of she took their order and then set down food. That that's exactly what she was supposed to do. Congratulations Yay! to the serving wench. Yeah, really great writing there. Yes. Gosh, what a dramatic story arc for that character too. She didn't get killed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like uh, the person who said they might join is not going to join, and I'm not going to make you sit through another chapter in the same day. So I'm going to end the stream. Thank you for being the only person to join.